Hello guys, I am Opal, Opal Mitchell, here to tell you, hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel, I've never talked to a camera before in my life on YouTube before, except for one time, I'm better at internal dialogue and bringing it back out, like talking to myself and then making that a internal monologue I say to other people. For streaming, mostly on TikTok, but now I'm going on YouTube to do it. Anyway, in the background is my new song, Empress to Opal. Be really nice if you watched it. Um, sounds good to me. Jake, the rise me again. Spark of connection that they won't let end. Their souls and powers to become one To bring the precious gemstone to life under the sun As they weave their magic, their eyes meet again So basically I was going to tell you a little bit about myself I am the middle child of three sisters And I just recently moved out after I graduated And I'll be moving to Alaska And I might vlog all the traveling process because I don't think I've traveled outside of touring and doing music but um this is for me this is for the vacation I've never been on vacation so it's well deserved Become one to bring the precious gemstone to life under the sun as they weave their magic their eyes meet again a spark of connection that they won't let in I think it might feel better if it's vlog style because if I went like this, I feel like it's so weird. Also, doing landscape mode on TikTok doesn't make sense either. I, I, I tried it once to make like a video for YouTube and I was like, no, I don't even think I could post this. It's more TikTok worthy than anything. So, if you want to get started on anything, do it the way you want to. It might turn out better in the end. Get the fire to create an opal's allure. I definitely have ADHD though, making clips just so it looks okay. <laughs> this sounds something like I would do. Um, people with ADHD or ADD can definitely make clips of it and cut the clips where they're spacing out so they can remember what they were saying and it looks a little bit more... It looks linear and it doesn't look like a syntax error. That. The next song... I might post an album soon that I'm listening to is Self Love. Yes, I dance to my music. If I eat, if I eat my own sandwiches when I work at Subway, does that mean I'm conceited? Feeling myself I'm conceited. Number two thing that I want to share about me. Second thing I want to share is that what I mean by touring is I've been on tour twice. One for also self-love, and then the other one for school. Uh, in my school, we went to Seattle as like a class in symphonic band and jazz band. We all went, and all the choirs went with them too. I was in choir and jazz and symphonic at the time. I don't know. I was probably in three, so I brought as many uniforms as I needed. And yeah, it was really fun. We went to the mall. Spencer's as a class there was chaperones. It was high school. So I guess it was like Kind of chill, but we all each had raised four hundred dollars per person so that we could share food hotel and everything for a week and do basically anything Like a kid should do on tour. Yeah, it was it was amazing actually there was a safe itinerary and they've done it multiple times so there used to be people who like got out of the dorms and like visited the girls dorm let's say the guys did that after hours now there was like the safety feature where they put tape on the doors and and when they locked at night for us they could see if you open the door past curfew so basically we there wasn't any of that for us so we got away with that. We got away with none of that, so mm hmm Sponsoring another song right now. Spotlight on my YouTube. If you haven't already seen it, you can go watch it now. It might be linked with a few other songs in the description, but if not, um, I'll link a playlist so you can get all of the songs. <laughs> Spotlight is the one with saxophone, flute, and I sing, like, a lot, like, 
I sing over myself in multiple tracks so I can make harmonies and it's very good. You should listen to it. Now back to the tour story times. Um, the second tour was for my own volition. I was scouted by my friend Marco Pena's manager, Steven Massone, and they were hosting a band and also filming a show, a Netflix special for the Resurrection Blues Band. And they were looking for a saxophonist that was basically a minor at the time so that they could resurrect the blues. They're teaching blues to kids so they can blah, blah, blah. So me being a young saxophonist, I was like really young back then, but we were always performing in like bars. And honestly, I had a signature drink, not at the bar, but with my mom whenever she would go with me and it was a Shirley Temple, a virgin Shirley Temple. And honestly, people did think I was like overage. I think when I was littler, I was, let's say broad, a lot more than now. I think when I got taller, I got like tinier at the same time. I, I know that sounds contradicting, but it makes sense to me. Anyway, my mom always got like a Shirley Temple with me and we went into basically each Jalisco's for this tour. And then a couple of Florences um, at the coast, a couple of them. So every time I go to a Jalisco's or Florence, I remember playing jazz in all of like the venue parts. Like anywhere in Eugene, all of the Jalisco's like, shout out to you guys. You guys were really, really, really nice. Sometimes they have murals like where we can perform in front of, really nice stage. Um, all of the people are super nice. Um, they would teach me Spanish so I can talk back a little bit and I'd be like, hell yeah, you're very helpful. And also Marcos was um, a heritage speaker for Spanish, so they helped me a lot. And um, in the midst of learning Spanish and blues music, I learned a lot. And then at some point, Stephen Massone got busy with working on resurrecting blues in in forest fires so they're volunteering in another state and that is why they postponed practices and since then i haven't been called back for a tour with them in a long time but they they found so many adults and um re really really cool people safe people actually like um the basis is like really nice teaching some tenor players would come along and every people they had their moms with them and the manager was always keeping you know the children getting along there was one time that me and marco let's say weren't getting along and he was like he enforced like intervention he was like get along and then we we're like fine and it was for the music so you know any resurrecting blues lesson is keep the keep the musicianship with it and any anger personal issues out of it it's my favorite thing i'm the man i'm the woman kid i can bake i can dance i can show show you all the tricks and i'll show you what i know the song is this called actually it's called barbie doll baby i have a lot of songs that's what this one's called i'll link this one down for sure <laughs> Okay, I hope you're recording, because I'm trying. Tell me if... <laughs> I can't rap it over and over again. Sad if you're high, you lie. In confidential light. Into your room, make you laugh for the night. I was so smooth with it, I cannot recreate it right now. That's not my fault, it's yours. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. So, with high school graduated, and then the Resurrection Blues Band on hiatus. Or on a cliffhanger, who knows. Um, I've been doing my own music. Producing it, and then streaming and dancing and making content on TikTok. I have been making, like, jokes. Um, a personality, a sense of humor. Like, a persona, a stage persona. And being more confident, talking to myself others and figuring out what would make sense to share as well and working on clarity honestly i write a lot like journals and i finished a couple of journals so i was wondering what else i might like to share i have so many thoughts and like important advice i also do i also ah, 
tarot, oracle card readings, general messages, collective messages. Um, I am a Jehovah's Witness Christian slash... My mom was an atheist because she was very hopeful within herself and the earth, but I have picked up, let's say, Norse paganism and would like to learn more about Wiccan stuff. And I have been a witch, let's say, for a long time. If you would like help with any of that stuff or you would like a reading, I would love to do it for you. And if you would like to give me any advice... Um, alternate opinions, anything, I'm actually open to it. I am down for the critique, I'll take it, I'll use it. I won't, I won't be offended by it, more importantly. And, um, if you have a different opinion, different, uh, religion, maybe you're, um, a Buddhist. <laughs> if you are, please, please say hi and tell me what, what's up. And, uh, yes, I, I think I'm a little bit agnostic if I like to learn about multiple so, I, I'm just learning right now. But I grew up Christian and that faith, Jehovah's Witness, if you relate to that as well. And um, if your parents also had different religions, good luck to you. Find, find play, Trailblaze yourself, one. Like, I love trailblazers in everywhere. Um, in their own cultures and religions or traditions, like, it's insane. Gay people... Being in any culture and being gay is really freaking hard. Or traditional, any religion, uh, it gets a little sketchy because it's not in all of their religions, it's only in some. So, congratulations and good luck if you're a trailblazer. I'm like praying for you in my sense. Just trying to stand and compete. Aww, this is take for me? Aww. I'm gonna take a little, take a seat. <laughs> Yo, I'm fucking up my own music. <laughs> I'm gonna make a compilation of just freaking it up. <laughs> You're my little shop. <laughs> my bros to fairs, events, and shows. When karma good, it grows. Fuck. <laughs> In a messy bun. Cause what I do is fun. Just what I do is fun. Cause all I do is fun. I'm not gonna mess it up. I'm saying I'm listening to myself, and then saying it. That's how you should do music. Don't assume. Just sing. And um, if you have lyrics, look at those. It's a good idea. This is my own music, so I was thinking about not looking at the lyrics, but then I'm like, no, no, no. I'm gonna be up on stage with like sheet music, <laughs> like in jazz band, for real. I got, I got really close to the camera, I'm sorry. Get away. No, I'm just kidding. I'm done. So I was thinking about another story I could tell. A good one. It's not too personal. Not about anything too personal life. Because it could get rough, or at least it could, in the currency of it happening, I would like to keep those people's things private. So if it happens and it's like already done, then that's a good story. Especially if they're not in your life anymore, but uh, if they've already consented to you telling the story, that's a good story to tell. That is my rubric for, like, telling a story, so it's been a while since I've had any stories to tell. To tell the stories about people, uh, without their consent, though. You can always make up a name. <laughs> the most embarrassing stories, I'll probably make up names so they don't have to endure it. Or let's say I've told this story before because I've asked them permission and they've told me to make up a name for them and that's okay. Ask them what name they want to be called in this story. And maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. They did give me consent to tell the stories. It's just, um, <laughs> it's still secret. Shush, shush. Otherwise, for my family, I'm going to call mom, mama. She always went by mama and then uh, a preface of her name. Like, like the suffix of her name, actually. It'd be like, mama name, and it's so good. And then my dad, James. And my fiance's foster dad, and he is dad. And then, and then my fiance's mommy. There you go. So we got mama, mommy dad and, and james so far and then got my little sister and my big sister
I have to introduce everybody for any of these stories to make sense. And then, I dated a lot of people in the past. Let's just say dated. I didn't go all the way, because you know how in Golden Girls, they're like, you don't have to go all the way. You went all the way with every boyfriend. That's crazy, bro. And they're like, <laughs> my favorite thing, go watch Golden Girls. Uh -huh. Old women talking about their slutty old lives. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I saw. And I started watching it and it, it was just better than that. There's way more to it than just that. I was, that's just one of my favorite dialogues. Okay, but these exes of mine. Middle school, let's say, when I was dating, I probably shouldn't have been because it was really hard for me to say no. There were so many situations where I was like, yeah, I'll date you. And honestly, in my head, I felt like it was because when you're small, you, you're not really understanding, like, I don't have to do everything for everyone. And that was that was a problem for me because I was a people pleaser too, so I was I was constantly and changing personalities, people pleasing. Something that I would get caught up in. I, I think I was high functioning autistic. I know I'm high functioning autistic. It's just that then I didn't, and that was a problem. Also, it was hard to diagnose and hard when you find out to um, tell people because they won't be nice to you when they find out. It's not a good thing. It's not something to brag about. So you kind of have to keep it to yourself unless you want critique, advice, all of that. But honestly, for me, I'm quite proud because even in my family and all of my like hardships, I've done really well. And I feel like I've made a very positive thing out of something that has been made very not positive for me. Like, um, every time I'm insulted for things like, oh, you, you, that's because you're autistic. I will be like, well, we have superpowers and you don't. One, one sign was that my friends told me it was weird that I brought my blanket to school, but I'm like, I saw other people do it and people wear their jammies and I mean, I slept with my blanket, but I just, I was resourceful. That's what I told them. My, my superpower is some resourcefulness, and they are without that preparedness. And that, that's a really positive thing to something that used to be negative. Now, through all of these boyfriends, there were some really awful ones. Like in middle school, I can recall, and I might say their names on here because they're fucked up. And I want to find them one day and tell them off. And I never got to report them, so it, it, it is deserved and welcoming. However, I think they might get their karma and I don't have to do anything. So for now, I won't say their names. You're welcome. However, when I was like, you know, what, 14, uh, 16 in middle school? I don't know, maybe 13, uh, 16, something like that. These dudes slapped my ass. I'm... They thought... They owned girls at that school, so I'm like, I'm still stuck on it. I still want to hit them back, but I stayed out of that. And those guys that thought they owned the school were the same guys that competed. I mean, I guess it means I'm likable, but <laughs> they competed to date me. It hurt my feelings so much afterward because I would re I was realizing I was demisexual. I am into a mental connection and not looks. So I'm not into gender or demographics or what you- Like, I, I'm into if you're smart and if we connect. I figured this out in the duration that they told me- Like, I'm demisexual and then they tell me, Oh, we, we just want to see who could date you first. Ew. I don't care what excuse you're making. You're a boy. That's- it's a lie, probably. It was- How could it not be a lie? Liars. They're definitely lying. And even if they weren't, what a fucked up cover-up. Later down the line, I stopped dating back-to-back. -back. I also stopped dating in friend groups. I felt like I was doing that to, you know, say yes to people who asked me out. Well, one, that is people-pleasing, but I thought I was figuring out all of these people, if I could fix them, 
or if they needed me. And if you need me, but do not want me, I have to stay. And if you don't want me, but you need me, then I'm there. Except for these men and boys, these boys were there. Not needed nor wanted, honestly. If 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 you have a chance, hang out, hang out with uh the friends that are I'm not trying to date you. That it doesn't matter what gender you are or they are. Mental state into something that looks for your standards get higher, and that's a good thing. But um, you get very narrow choices. And let's say it's good to have narrow choicing and high standards because um. One, if you're, well, if you were young like me, you, there are so many fish in the sea because there'll be more fish in the sea when you're like 40, when you actually want someone. <laughs> so, so you don't want fish then. And then even later, you should be narrow and, 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 and high standards about who you pick because there'll still be more. There'll be, there, there's so many fish in the sea that you should really narrow it down to someone who's nice to you. Your friend group, too. No matter how young or old you are, never, never stop. Like, making your standards very high. It's it's very important. Stop dating in friend groups. Stop dating in general. No, I'm just kidding. So, I basically dated this guy for, like, a whole six years. And that is the next person I'll introduce as... Oh, I gotta get crafty, bro. <laughs> I got two. I got two. The, the music that he listened to. Lil Darky and Shoreline Mafia. <laughs> Lil D. Lil Dicky. He listened to Lil Dicky. Okay, his name is Lil Dicky. There we go. It's, um... I'm not gonna say... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, he's not... I'm not about to say this on camera, but uh, I, I'm not going to say anything about his genitalia. That's what I want to say. I just want to say that he listened to Little Dicky, and he's kind of like Little Dicky's personality. Maybe his ego was like this. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I've already told this story many times. So Little Dicky and I were polyamorous. And for six years... I was demisexual, so I was like trying to keep it mental connection. And he said he wasn't knowing if he was in love, so I was, I don't know. We were both high functioning autistic, and I was trying to figure out what he wanted, and he would cheat a lot. So then I tried to make, an, an, again, a positive thing out of a negative thing. So I led myself on with this guy for six years. He was cheating on me and everything. And I just said I was Polly, and we were in an open relationship. And this is another story of women who do too much. But my funniest story of one time he cheated on me, I caught him. In the park that I live by. And this was the time that I was realizing that I was a little, little uh, okay with being gay. Like, demisexual in the way that... I would get down with a woman in a, in a mental connection little manner. Manner. Yeah, okay. Oh, so yeah. I caught little Dicky with a woman, and I was like, damn, little Dicky, who's that woman? I was I was a little gay then. And I was like, yo, woman. I'll have to introduce them now as a... <laughs> Snoop Dogg. <laughs> as Snoop Dogg. <laughs> I mean, Lil Dicky and Snoop Dogg, they're together. Definitely. That makes sense to me. What does she listen to? Oh, God. Okay, we're calling her pink hair. <laughs> uh, uh, it reminds me of my music teacher. Blue shirt, please. <laughs> pink hair lady. I'm like, wow. That's my boyfriend. But before I got to her, of course, there was someone else. Nickelodeon, their brother. <laughs> okay, the names is really funny. I didn't know this was gonna be the funnest part this time. Anyway, God, Nickelodeon was in the way and was like, they're they're. F I'm like, that's my boyfriend, and they're like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, but they're. F and I'm like, I um, 
I don't know how we mentioned the, the mutual, but I'm naming him Axel. I dated this guy named Axel, and then for some reason, Pink Hair was dating Axel right now, and so she was also cheating on Axel. They have my boy, and then they let they let me go to tell their sis sister that Nickelodeon let me go to tell Lil Dicky and Pink Hair what was going on. They were trashed. I was upset about this. I was like, why are you trash in a park? <laughs> I should have broke up with him there. But then I was like, what to make it better with? This is when you should walk away. I mean, I did later. Because I wasn't about to do it with them in the freaking open. Sounds like so many rules are broken. I flirted with Chica with the pink hair. And I stayed dating little Dickie after they cheated that time. And, and many other times after that. But I got with, let's say, yeah, I got with pink hair too. Now, I'm with Lil Dicky and Pink Hair. I didn't know I was like this either until I started doing it, so I don't know. I was, I was polyamorous, but in the sense of people pleasing for someone else. But then I started pleasing myself right there. Right there, I was pleasing for myself. And ironically, it wasn't any manipulative factor. Now, Pink Hair was like, okay. Speaking of, Pink Hair wasn't dating Axel. Pink hair was dating a girl. They cheated on their girlfriend. I'll call them Mimi. And Mimi brought me to the park. I hate I hate Mimi though. Mimi's not even nice. <laughs> Mimi <laughs> Her, I don't know why I have so much malice. I actually forgive her. Because even after everything, okay, I remember more to this story. This is getting good. Okay, to clarify, Pink Hair and Mimi dated. And they cheated on Mimi, so that's why Mimi was trying to bring me to the action. They were not nice for doing so, also. And they, they proved that they were not nice later, and I'll get to that. I broke up with Lil Dicky. <laughs> I wasn't dating a celebrity, but I should have dated- I mean- yeah, I should have dated real little Dicky instead of this little Dicky. But this little story Dicky. Dyslexia. <laughs> should have broke up with little Dicky. He's not a celebrity. I just can't say his name. So Mimi liked little Dicky. Also, and then tried to take little Dicky from me, and I was like. <laughs> So when your pink haired girl cheated, you just wanted little Dicky. So you're not gay? Or something like that. I'm like, really afterward, they only dated men, so I was like, Well, if you're gonna play the pink haired girl, I'll take her. <laughs> and so I did go about that. And, and, and pink haired girl liked me more than they liked the Anthony, and I really like pink haired girl. However, it's pretty toxic. So I continued dating little Dicky and then Pink Haired Girl moved back to like another state. And then Mimi started dating little Dicky's brothers. And that's how you could tell that they were not into women. <laughs> and how you could tell that they were only into little Dicky's. <laughs> so basically before pink hair left the relationship, my best friend entered because, let's name Chase. Chase wanted to control who I dated so you could tell that they liked me and they just wanted to do me a favor. So I let them just like, I don't know. They said they would be there for any children that were accidentally made in the process of me being with any of my other boyfriends. I thought that was really nice. It was like, uh, I'll stay, I'll stay the longest is basically what they said, even back then. And, I mean, they're still in my life, so I guess so. Good job, Kate. Good, good job, Chase. Pink hair 
best friend, Lil Dicky, and I were in a relationship. It went really, really, really well. I will probably have stories from all four of us later, but not off the top of my head right now. Then, just in the process of that, pink hair, Chase, goes later. So it's just me and Lil Dicky again. Right? <clears throat> And so, me and little Dicky are dating polyamorously again, and I'm like, I should have broke God off. Or maybe got with Chase or something. Like, like, just like... <laughs> I don't chase. I attract. Then, little Dicky cheated on me for Mimi. And I was like, <laughs> And then, I finally, eh, and probably took a break from from Lil Dicky in that time, which was the best thing I could have ever done for myself. Happily so, got on a dating app with Lil Dicky, and then that's when I met my current fiance. And then after I met my current fiance, I broke up with my current fiance. I don't know if they want to be on my YouTube channel. Hey, you want to be on my YouTube? I'm just kidding. They're asleep right now. <laughs> I'll ask them later. They were really, really, really interesting, the little dicky. They were like, Hey, little dicky. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't fight at all. Actually, I think we had a... I, I, I don't know if I can say it on here. Hey, YouTube guidelines. You have stories about uh, polyamorous relationships on here? And if so, tell me. Anyway, we did what, um, don't imagine it. Any three friends would do. <laughs> but after that, um, my fiance realized that Dicky wasn't big Dicky. I don't know. They weren't good for me. They noticed that they were like manipulating me, a little gaslighting me. And I wasn't getting like my side of polyamory very much. However, it was really funny because um, we could definitely tell that little Dicky didn't really like my fiance as much as I did and that that fucked little Dicky up. When I broke up with little Dicky, little Dicky called me like sixty times. So it was worth it. And yeah. Mmm. It was a really good relationship roller coaster. But since I had been engaged to little dicky in that time that i had got disengaged because they never got me a ring and then i got a ring <laughs> so if i ever get married i might vlog that and maybe they will have let me post them because um the camera shy peoples that i hang out with but then i realized that it's good to not change yourself for other people but change where you sit at the table make your own table and then choose who sits at it it's better that way. It really is. Now, in all that vagueness, I hope someone learned something. Um, now, back to the Christian and Wiccan thing. I said something about being agnostic, and I feel like that's closer to not contradicting myself. Because, you know, in the life of Pi, where Pi's dad is like, Bessine, you can't believe in anything that's the same as believing in nothing. So, I, I believe in that as well. Make sure to learn what you're believing in behind it a little bit. And then you can believe a little bit more. But the point of belief is having faith to have a above, like some divine power. I mean, it can depend on the divine power, but it's beyond yourself. You have divine intuition, though. So I think that's from a god, if the god. <laughs> I am very vague when it comes to like learning, but... If anyone has anything to share to me, I will add anything more I can do without giving a you should listen to this opinion as much as I can because I don't want to do that as any influencer would. I want to be least infodemic as possible because uh, you can you can corrupt people's minds with like, you know, necessary opinions opinions aren't necessary but they are crucial to a personality mm. back to uh taking advice if you have a personality there's some things you want to set in stone 
and then there's some things that you can you can t- continue to people please but um there's like something about having like boundaries and having swaying ones like listening to advice there's some things that um i realize will not be advice for me because i go about it a different way the voice or x factor you'll have you know coaches that you get at the end if you win right adam levine or Katy perry their voices are so different their advice is going to be different so if you're listening to lana del rey for advice to sound like adam levine one it's not going to work and two you want to sound like yourself you don't really want to sound like them so there is some things that is musicianship and musical that you never have to change within yourself. I mean, you can work on tone, tonality, but there are some notes that if they crunch, or if it's in a falsetto, there's a type of music, like there's Five Nights at Freddy's music that is um, really distorted, that sounds amazing. There's syncopative music, so the rhythm isn't even, but that makes it better. If you fuck up your music, it's a happy accident. Bob Ross. I don't know, but it's it's he's not a musician, he's a painter, but it goes the same places. His advice goes so many places if you think about it. Now, I have one last story, and after that, a thank you to everyone that I've talked about and everyone who is there for me in my life. <laughs> now I have a traveling vlog that I have to edit right after this, and that will be content. Now, my last story before I get into it. My little sister, I'm really grateful for for them. I, I have to credit them a lot. They they showed me a lot of things throughout my life, too. What I've learned from my little sister honestly catapults what I've learned from my older sister sometimes. Like, <laughs> I learned how my little sister asked for help. I, I learned that they used to take everything I said for granted because they thought I was lying to them. It's really helpful to know that when you say, don't put your hand on the stove... That when they did it, it's because they didn't believe you, bro. Or anything other than that that was important that I tried to tell them. They didn't listen because they thought I was lying. And it's not that I ever lied. In fact, we 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 were not allowed to lie, even on even by circumstance. Not to my knowledge is what we said. So we couldn't even lie by a circumstance. However, how would I know if I like what I like? How I like what I like. Anyway, now I have a story about my little sister. But first, I want to say I made it to Alaska. (laughs) Anyway, it would have been really helpful to know that I was taken for granted because I could have told them that I wasn't lying in the first place because that would have helped them out, right? Right? Yeah. No. There are some other occasions that I'm really grateful for that my little sister does perfectly. Like, they just make me food. When I'm really sad, they come in my room and then they, when they leave, they leave the door wide open. That's my favorite part, actually. And I wanted to thank you from my YouTube channel for that, little sis. I <laughs> also wanted to thank all of my viewers and all of my subscribers for subscribing, liking my videos, and even leaving hate comments if that's what you like to do. I love seeing it. I have a plan to actually make some compilation of hate comments and the lovely comments if there ends up being enough someday. And then... My next video will be my travel vlog. So thank you for everyone who watches me and see you next time. I'm trying that again. I'm not used to this. Bye. (laughs) No. Hey, what's up, you guys? Yes. Oh, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you. Thank you. If you haven't already subscribed, you should subscribe and like the video. And I edit all my videos, so I do really hard work on them. I use CapCut, InShot, and when I do music, I use BandLab. Those are my most frequently asked questions. So thank you. If you use any of those, I'll put them in the description so you can use them if you'd like to. Bye-bye.